This is Chelsea Marks for the EPT 220 test number 50, and that is a dental prophylaxis um, we're going to be doing on this dog here. Um, so first thing I'm going to show you here is um, we have our patient intubated properly and the cuff is inflated, which is important so the water doesn't go down into her back of her throat here. So we have her intubated and we have her on a towel here to um, push in her head. We also are going to use these little sponges to put in the back of her throat here so that water doesn't go down the back. Alright, right, so the next part we're going to do is our um, exam. So we're just looking over the teeth, any structures in the lips here. Um, teeth have moderate tartar. I'm going to look under the tongue as well. Looks good. And then just palpate the structures of the head and neck. We have the lymph nodes there. And everything in her face seems to check out here, and the lymph nodes are not swollen. Uh, so, the next part, we're going to go through our instruments here. And the only one I'm going to use right now is the Explorer. So go ahead and check. Um, first thing we look for retained deciduous teeth, and there aren't any that I can see right now. We're going to go through and check for any pockets. There's a little bit of hyperplastic tissue here that we might be removing today. creating a little bit of a pocket, but the others look good. So the first hand instrument I'm going to show you here is the curette. Yeah. Up close. There it is. So um, for hand scaling, you can use this little guy to get the tartar off. And then this heavier tartar back here, I'm going to use the tartar calculus removers here. I'm going to be careful with these because you can injure the gum tissue and you can also fracture the teeth. So that got rid of the bulk of the tartar there. Um, for the next part, we're going to go ahead and use the ultrasonic scaler. Here you want to make sure. <laughs> okay, you want to make sure that they uh, that you don't touch each tooth longer than about 10 to 15 seconds, and that you're only using the side of the scaler and not the tip. You're also not using this subgingerly. to keep using it, just go to a different tooth and come back to that tooth. Okay. 
and there might be a little bit up under the sledge, so I'm going to use the curette one more time um, under the gums, subventually. And we're going to give her a rinse. face here and our polishing cup on our low speed and polishing H2. Again with this one you want to stay on the tooth no longer than 10 to 15 seconds. You can burn the tooth. You don't really want to go above 3000 RPMs either. down the back of the throat and blowing it out this way. So that looks pretty good. And that is one quadrant of a dental prophylaxis. This is Chelsea Marks for BECT 220 test 50, which is our dental prophylaxis. Um, as you can see, we've um, just finished. I'll go ahead and show you our supplies that we use during our dental prophy today uh, for patient Sadie. Um, but I want to be sure that you saw in the video, I was wearing um, my exam gloves, I have my mask on, and we have these nifty masks that have a visor attached to them, so we don't have to wear our glasses um, during the procedure because we have a shield, so it's great. Um, so, kind of going to go over our instruments first, our instrumentation, and our dental charting um, on this model. So, um, first things first is our uh, dental chart here. So this is what we would use to um, label any extraction. So on top we have a feline here, and we worked on a canine today, so we have a canine here. Um, I have my pen here to show you my um, comments. So this patient um, did end up having one extraction, which is the 102. Um, so that's the upper right here, so we're going to put that in this box that we extracted it. So we use an X there um, for uh, incisor 102. Um, one thing I should go over. so. Upper right is the 100s, upper left is the 200s, lower left is the 300s, and lower right are the 400s. So, um, showing on this model here, we have one, two, three, four, um, as far as labeling those teeth go. Um, so we have that nicely marked here that we extracted. Um, tooth 102 and it was fractured so usually we will just write fracture um, or a little fx above it so um, that's really the only tooth that we had trouble with um, if we have excessive tartar um, which we did on the upper pm4s which is a carnassial here which is number 108 and 208 so um, sometimes i fill in up here a lot of tartar um, severe tartar enough that we had to use those tartar chippers to get it off. So um, in our clinic, that's what we'd use for excessive tartar. Um, not worried about any of her um, depths or pockets. There wasn't any um, pockets to speak of um, on the quadrant that I cleaned. So we're going to go ahead and um, leave that as our charting. And we're going to go over um, the anatomy of the teeth next. So um, we have four types here. We have our incisors which are these little guys, um, six on top, six on bottom, that you see right there. Um, we're missing one tooth here that broke off, so there should be six on the bottom, but there isn't. So we have our incisors, we have our canines, which is your large um, chewing tooth there, your tearing, uh, biting tooth. We have our premolars here, um, upper and lower, and then we have our molars in the back here. So on the top, the premolars um, go up to that premolar four, right here, PM4, which is a carnassial, and then we have two molars here um, for our canine. So this is a canine mouth. Um, feline's different, but I'm explaining canine right now. So again, we have our four types. Um, we have our incisors here. We have our canines. 
We have our pre-molars here, all the way up to the big one, and then we have our molars. Uh, works the same way on the bottom. We have our premolars and we have our molars. Okay. Um, the sides of the teeth, we should go over that too. So there's directional terms when um, speaking about the mouth. Um, more rostral is going to be towards the front, so rostral towards the nose. Um, more caudal um, is going to be towards the back, um, near the back of the head. We don't use caudal all the time, but we will use rostral. Um, there's directional terms as far as um, the facings of the teeth, so depending on whether it's touching the cheek. Um, so this would be the buccal side of these teeth. Um, and then we have the um, labial side in the front because it's touching the lip instead of the cheek. So we have uh, buccal, labial. On the inside we have lingual because you're touching the tongue. So we have lingual on the mandible and we have palatal on the inside surfaces um, that are near the palate. So um, again, we have lingual, we have palatal, we have buccal, and we have um, labial touching the lips. So those are your four directional terms there. Um, each tooth also has a directional term, so if we're talking about the more um, caudal root, distal root, you can say either. Um, so caudal uh, meaning the further back here, and um, here we go. Mesial and distal. So we're going to have mesial being closer to the body, distal being further away. Um, we have those little directional terms as well. So you can talk about the three roots here also. So this tooth up here has three roots. So when it's back in its position here, we can talk about um, our more palatal root. And you can talk about your mesial and your distal. Um, mesial here and distal here. So we have those directional terms as well. So next we're going to go over our instrumentation here. So starting here from left to right, uh, our dental model, we have our um, tartar removers. So they have a nice little uh, tip on those to be able to remove the tartar. Um, we have set a couple scalers here. Um, a nice close-up of these two guys. So little sickle scalers there. And we have our explorer. It's that little guy. This also has our periodontal probe on the end of it, um, which I'm not quite sure you can see, but it has little markings um, for millimeters there um, to gauge the depth of the pockets. And then we have a curette. So this guy is your curette, and this is going to be used to do um, the subgingival cleaning of the tartar right under the gum line. Those. Um, we have a periosteal elevator. So, this is going to be used by your doctors um, that are going to elevate the periosteum away uh, from the gingiva and away from the tooth to do an extraction. We have our extraction forceps here. So, again, used by your doctor uh, to pull the teeth. We have um, various sizes of our periodontal elevators here. These guys are used to um, break down the periodontal ligament around the alveolar bone. So in the socket, you're going to use these to elevate and break down that um, periodontal ligament and also elevate the tooth so that you can extract it. So we have that. We have a little mouth mirror here. We don't use this too often, but we have it in there. And we also have a um, cheek or tongue guard here. Also don't use that too often. Um, so, I'm going to go over the use of these instruments here on our little model. So, first and foremost, there's a lot of tartar usually um, on our patients here on these upper PM4s. Um, a lot of the time, there's tartar everywhere. So, if it's really thick, you're going to take your tartar chippers and you're going to use that to have the crown. So, you're going to rest it on the crown and go from um, the gingiva down to the tip of the crown. So, you're going to just do that little crunching motion there and chip away at any uh, large amounts of tartar that are on any of these teeth. You do want to be careful because if you do any rocking motion like this, you can start to elevate that tooth. So it'll start to be wiggly, but you do just want to be really careful and keep the correct angle of just straight down and chipping that tartar off. You want to be careful that you don't injure the gingiva as well because if you clamp onto it, you're going to rip it off. That's how to get rid of tartar. We can use our scalers here. If we have um, 
super gingival, so uh, not under the gum line. If you have any um, tartar here that you want to use and get off. So you want to use a fulcrum, which is a finger on another tooth um, in the same quadrant. And you're going to go from gum uh, gingiva downwards um, down to the tip of the crown. So you want to go ahead and keep it parallel and use long strokes going from the gum line down, working downwards. If you go up, you could stab the gingiva and cause damage. We also have our curette here. So um, a curette is used for the subgingival tartar. So you want to again have a fulcrum and you're going to use that uh, little guy here um, to get up under the gum line. So I don't know if you can see very well, but that little guy is nicely curved so that you can get under the gum line and kind of go up and do a little bit of um, scaling subgingivally. You don't ever want to put your ultrasonic tip under the eye gingiva um, because it can injure it. Um, it can also burn the tooth. So we don't use our ultrasonic scaler on um, under the gum line. So I'm going to zoom out here and show you our dental unit. So our, let's see, this guy is our piezo ultrasonic scaler and the foot puddle. So I'm going to show you on our model what I kind of showed you earlier on our patient, but I'm not sure you're able to see very close up. So I'm going to go ahead and show you as if I were cleaning the teeth here. Zoom in. Okay. And pretend our patient is on a pillow here and intubated and all that. Um, so you want to work um, in nice long strokes with this guy. You want to use the side of the scaler. Um, there you go. You don't want to use the tip. The tip is going to burn the tooth and cause a hole. Um, it's just not meant to be used. So use the side. So we're going to go ahead and place our ultrasonic scaler here. And we're going to work from the gum line down. Just using the side of the scaler. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit closer so you can see the motion here. So working in long broad strokes overlapping using the side only going from the gum line down to the tip of the crown okay that tooth's a little loose and same thing with the next tooth going from the gum line working down in long broad strokes that overlap using the side not the tip and going from the gingiva down to the crown okay so last part i'm going to show you is our polishing Set our patient down here real quick and get our profi paste. So the last part here is using our slow speed um, polishing hand piece here with a little cute little penguin on it there. So we have a uh, profi cup here that we're going to pick up our profi paste which is just um, a medium grit um, powder that we use to polish the teeth. So we have a little bit of that here on this tongue depressor and place a little bit on our polishing cup and we're going to go ahead and attempt to polish our fake patient here so I'm going to zoom in a little closer what we want to be really sure of when we're using um, anytime we're using the ultrasonic or when we're using this little guy that we're not staying on a tooth too long because if you do that you could burn the tooth so um, with the ultrasonic scaler little piezo guy between 10 to 15 seconds, and I'm not even comfortable with 15 seconds, I move it at 10 seconds to another tooth um, because you're going to cause damage, uh, maybe permanent damage, uh, burn the tooth, cause it to die off. Um, so we just move quickly. You can also dam damage the enamel really badly. So same thing with this little guy. Um, you want to work from the gum line down to the tip of the crown, and you don't want to be spending too much time on each tooth. So you want to move around um, about every two to three seconds to a different spot uh, so that you're not taking off too much enamel with this. That's not the goal. The goal is to smooth out any of those scratches that you've made with the ultrasonic scaler. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this. So we're with the gum line, moving from the gum line down to the tip of the crown. You can kind of flange that cup out a bit and go just a tiny bit subgingively. But again, you don't want to damage the tissue. 
So we're just working um, thumb line down to the tip of the crown with some overlapping strokes. Like so. Okay, and you don't want to go also over 3,000 RPM. So if you hear that, that's too fast. So you want to keep it down at about 3,000. We have a little pressure gauge down there. This is the noise you want to hear. Okay. So we're going to give our patient a little rinse. Clean them up a little bit. And nice clean teeth. Um, so last thing we're going to go over is our post-op instructions that I've written up for our patient here today. I'll zoom out a little. So um, we have this nice little printed out um, instruction sheet that goes home with our client. So post-dental instructions here. Um, we're going to go over that they might be a little bit tired after their anesthesia um, just because they've been under anesthetic, so they're um, wearing it off the rest of the day um, and they might be a little tired. So um, soft food usually recommended for the patients that have had an extraction. In this case, she only had that one incisor and she may not need that um, soft food, but they can opt to do that if they'd like. Um, a regular diet after that may be given. Um, on the day of the dental today, so last night when we called to, um, to uh, make sure they were coming this morning, we told them to make sure to limit their meal last night and no food after 10 p.m. and then no food also the morning of the procedure. So um, also warning them that anesthesia can sometimes make the pet nauseous so when they get home that evening um, she may not want to go ahead and eat her regular meal so maybe give a half a portion. Um, it's uh, common to have a little bit of blood in the mouth maybe in the water bowl or while they're eating uh, due to that extraction so I'm going to make sure that the owner knows that there could be a touch of blood. Um, that's normal, but go ahead and call us if there's any excessive bleeding or if the patient just won't eat. Um, so we're also going to send home antibiotics and pain control. Um, in this case, uh, we did do a nerve block on that patient, so not quite necessary to send home that pain medication just for that one um, incisor, so she did not opt to elect to send home pain medication or antibiotics in this case, but if the mouth was really filthy, we would go ahead and send home clindromycin. Um, just to be sure that we didn't release any of that bacteria into the bloodstream, potentially causing endocarditis of the heart. So after the dental procedure, we want to be sure that they take care of their investment um, because cleaning the teeth is um, expensive and we want to make sure that it lasts a long time. So we go over toothbrushing with them. We have a variety of toothbrushes and toothpaste here for purchase. Um, make sure that they're going to go ahead and start that um, within you know 12 to 24 hours they're going to start to build up uh, plaque and the plaque becomes harder so we're going to go ahead and make sure that they start toothbrushing right away um, we have some prescription diets here like royal canin or hills science diet that have um, dental diets with a larger kibble that takes a little extra chewing and that actually keeps the teeth a little bit cleaner Not a little bit here. Um, we have some gel that can be applied post-op um, at home that is a chlorhexidine based um, gel. We also have a water additive that is an option that they can go ahead and purchase. Uh, we have the CET chews, which are a great option. Um, we also have the Tartar Shield chews that are VOHC approved, so um, the Veterinary Oral Health Council. We go ahead and sell those. Um, we do recommend those too. Um, we don't sell greenies, but we do tell um, our clients that those are also an option. So. Um, tomorrow we'll go ahead and we'll be calling and checking on our patient in the morning just to be sure that everything went well, um, that she's taking um, food in and that she's drinking and they don't have any um, problems post-op and I don't expect any because this patient did really well. So um, again, we went over her dental chart here, not very exciting, a little bit of tartar and extracted that one incisor and we went over for post-op instructions that are going to go home with her and her mom. We went over our dental instrumentation here and we showed our technique on our fake patient. Went over all these instruments here and went over the ultrasonic scaling unit and the slow speed um, dental polishing unit as well. So uh, that was VETT 220.
class 50, which is a dental prophylaxis in a dog. This is Chelsea Marks for VETT 220, task 50, which is the dental prophylaxis in a dog. Um, we're going to go over the last little bit here of our um, task, which is to go over some of the um, problems that we can have in the mouth, and then some of our um, oral health home preventives that we have here for sale, as well as the benefits of dental um, digital or dental radi radiography, um, uh, some of the benefits of that. So we have um, our pictures here. Um, a few problems that we can encounter in um, this is a canine mouth so we have retained deciduous canine teeth um, so this tooth here is the retained deciduous tooth um, want to get that out of there because that can become a problem um, as far as collecting a bunch of tartar this looks like a smaller uh, breed dog so this can actually um, cause a problem with eruption of this uh, permanent canine as well and can collect a bunch of tartar here. So we usually get those out uh, during their spay if they're um, coming up on a year old and those are still present. And then we have a problem here with an oral nasal fistula in a dog. Uh, seen plenty of those lately where um, the canine here is abscessed or one of the first premolars is abscessed. In this case, it's missing. They probably just pulled it. Um, there's a fistula here, which is a hole uh, communicating up to the nasal cavity. Uh, usually this uh, dog would be sneezing um, just constantly uh, because of that fluid and any bacteria coming up uh, communicating to the nasal cavity there. So this is an oral nasal fistula um, inside the mouth in a dog. Um, severe attrition here. So these uh, incisors here are all really worn. Um, this is going to be due to abnormal chewing forces. So this dog may have been um, chewing on things that were too hard for his teeth, like such as a kennel door, um, his crate at home, something like that. And for a long time, because these are really worn, you can see the enamel, the inner dentin, and the actual pulp there. So um, these, you know, we would probably think about extracting uh, because they do have pulp exposure and um, they're gonna be a problem for that dog. So um, that is uh, abnormal wear. And then down here we have a slab fracture of the upper PM4, which is the carnassial with some pulp exposure. So this guy here, um, hopefully you can see it really well. Um, there's the pulp cavity there and the diseased portion of the tooth um, that you can tell here that's darker. And then um, this is the portion that fractured off, which is called the slab uh, fracture, which is from excessive uh, force, chewing force up and down. So um, chewing on, um, again, things that he shouldn't have been chewing on probably, just with a lot of bite force um, and that fractured that piece of that molar off. We go over severe calculus in a dog. So here um, is really, really significant um, calculus buildup on the canine, the premolars, and that molar there. Um, this tooth here is going to have a really deep pocket. So I have the, the view down here for you after the cleaning. Um, so it looks like they cleaned up okay. Um, this one here, like I said, huge pocket, no. Uh, gingiva there covering it, so a lot of recession. Um, that tooth's going to need to come out. So there's uh, bifurcation exposure here. You can stick your periodontal probe right through there. And um, a huge, huge pocket with, um, with that gingival recession. There's probably a pocket too around this with all that uh, gingivitis on that canine happening. So that is severe calculus. Uh, next we're going to go over the stages of periodontal disease. So. Um, stage one here is just gingivitis, which is mild inflammation on that gingiva. Uh, stage two is early periodontal disease, where you have buildup of plaque and tartar plus the um, gingivitis, the inflammation there on the gingiva. Moderate periodontal disease here, where we have um, moderate tartar buildup and more significant uh, gingivitis with some bleeding. And then we have stage four, which is advanced periodontal disease, which you have the um, horizontal uh, loss of the gingiva here, um, vertical loss as well, probably some bone loss um, in addition to um, really, really uh, built up tartar and calculus on those molars there. Um, so we also can go over fractures. So this is um, an enamel infraction, which is actually um, just uh, due to force as well, uh, crushing force, and those are little tiny hairline fractures. 
um, going horizontally of the tooth. Um, there's an enamel fracture here, which just the top of that crown has been um, fractured off. There's um, an uncomplicated crown fracture where you have just the, this is the same thing here, where it's just uh, taken off the top of the crown. Complicated where you have uh, pulp exposure and an infection. Uncomplicated slab fracture where you have um, the, you know, that slab that tore off there. Uh, no root exposure. Then you have a complicated root, crown root fracture where we have uh, the slab fracture is broken off and actually has that um, pulp exposure here. Really painful. And then here you can have a root fracture. So these are found on um, dental x-ray, which is what I'm going to go over next. So you can see the crown looks intact, but when you would probe that or um, be palpating that, you would feel that it would be mobile in its socket because of that uh, root fracture down under the gum line. So next thing I'm going to go over here is to our computer and show you why dental radiography is important. So along with that last picture I showed you of the root fracture that we wouldn't have found elsewise. Um, here, right here, um, you can see the radiolucency around the um, root here on our lower molar. Um, that would be a tooth root abscess. So we have a um, significant amount of infection there in that molar. And that tooth, um, the distal portion of this tooth, is going to actually probably have a huge pocket here um, and probably some pus coming out of there. So um, that's one benefit there. You would see um, things on x ray that you don't normally see just um, on normal visual physical exam. We can go back to the chart view here look at a few other teeth. So here we can see um, not a lot going on with those ones. Those are some more normal views here of the premolars and that canine. Um, this dark lucency here um, isn't actually an abscess, that is um, the sinus cavity. So those look healthy. i can give you one more good example of some molars here. Okay, so these will be our some molars here. So um, those ones actually look pretty healthy as well. Um, so we have our carnassial tooth here, um, a premolar, and then the rest of the molars behind it. So um, again, digital radiography is really good at finding things under the gum line that were under um, under there that we're not able to see on physical exam. Um, such as root tip fractures, um, abscesses, and uh, pathology of the mouth, such as cancer. So, um, last thing we're going to go over here, going back to our table, is some of our at-home, um, beneficial at-home treatments that we can have um, for our patients. So, we have um, our Dentahex Oral Rinse, which is really nice because um, this is a chlorhexidine rinse that's going to be able to be... Um, applied to the teeth. Uh, it doesn't taste bad. It has a little minty flavor. Um, and this is going to actually um, kill off a lot of the bacteria in the mouth that's um, not helping uh, the gingivitis. So uh, this oral rinse is going to actually kill off that bacteria and improve um, periodontal disease um, and improve that gingivitis um, in this pet. We also have some um, veterinary oral health council approved uh, rawhide chews here. So these are going to be really useful on those dogs that like to chew um, and have um, excess tartar buildup. So these chews are hard enough that when they chew them, they're going to help break down the tartar that's on the teeth. Uh, this one's going to prevent the tartar from even um, sticking to the teeth. And this one is going to, if the tartar is back onto the teeth, this is going to help um, break that tartar off. So there's also um, a variety of dental foods um, that are available to you. Uh, we don't carry them in stock, they're a special order, um, but there are some foods from Science Sai and Royal Canaan um, that are a bigger kibble, that are a little crunchier, that help uh, remove the tartar as well. So um, that was the end here of the ETT 220 Task 50, the Dental Prophylaxis.